Epilepsy is a condition where you have seizures and an enduring predisposition or recurrence of seizures. Historically, it's been defined by more than one seizure. And a seizure is any variety of things. So the one we see on television where someone falls to the ground and starts shaking all over certainly can be an example of a seizure, but someone can also just stare off for a few seconds, and that can also be a seizure. To be an epileptic seizure, a seizure must be associated with an electrical change in the brain. So the brain is misfiring, essentially. My personal practice is focused entirely on the treatment of patients with epilepsy, particularly those with medically refractory epilepsy. And those are patients who've been tried on conventional therapies and haven't gotten their seizures under complete control. Our goal is always complete freedom from seizures, ideally with as few or no side effects. And the ideal workflow is after you've seen your doctor, if they think you might have medically refractory epilepsy, they'll refer you to see myself or one of my colleagues who treat medically refractory epilepsy. We'll then discuss with you on your situation, the possible investigations, the tests that you might undergo uh, to confirm your diagnosis and see what options you have available. Some of those options may include implantation of devices or other surgeries, in which case we would also refer you to see our neurosurgeons here. In most cases, after a thorough history and physical, uh, your initial evaluation will include an MRI scan, which is a picture of the structure of your brain. Uh, we use a special protocol here that takes extra thin slices through the areas of your brain that are most likely to cause your seizures, so that we may see subtle changes that could have been missed on a prior MRI scan. In addition to that, you'll likely have a stay in our epilepsy monitoring unit where we do continuous video EEG monitoring. So we'll stick electrodes on your head to record the electricity of your brain, and that will help confirm both whether the th events you're experiencing are epileptic seizures and where in your brain they may be coming from. In addition, for select patients, we'll also do a PET scan, which is a test where they inject sugar into your vein, and that sugar is uptaken into your brain and then we do a picture of your brain to see where that sugar goes, which lets us better figure out the function of your brain. So it's a complement to the MRI, which tests the structure. So by looking at all these studies together, we're better able to get a picture of exactly where your seizures might be coming from. For some people, we'll also do what's called a WADA test. In that test, we inject a sedative agent into part of your brain in preparation for surgery to see what consequences might happen if we were to cut out that area. Another test we do in certain cases is called a SPECT scan. For that test, again, you'll be admitted to the epilepsy monitoring unit. You'll have the electrodes for the EEG attached to your head, and we will try to capture one of your seizures. But during a seizure, we'll inject a tracer into your veins and then as you're having the seizure, that tracer gets uptaken to the area where the seizure is starting. We then take you down for the scan to see where the tracer went. We do a second scan when you aren't having a seizure to compare the two, and the area that lights up during the seizure and not during the in-between time is thought to be very closely correlated to where the seizures are coming from. Every patient who's coming in to be evaluated for refractory epilepsy will also likely get a referral to our neuropsychology colleagues, where they'll do thorough memory testing to find if you might have certain areas of memory deficit, which is often the case in patients with epilepsy. In patients with medically refractory epilepsy who failed more than two drugs, the chance that you'll ever become seizure-free on medications alone is somewhere around 1%. In cases like that, we evaluate you for other things, such as epilepsy surgery. I know brain surgery may sound scary, but in the properly chosen candidate, with 1% chance of seizure freedom with medications, you could have as high as 80% chance of seizure freedom with surgery. <laughs>